that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Oh, hi there, YouTube. We're back again today for another game review, another special Kickstarter review. Today, I'm very excited to be checking out Missing Link from Duncan Davis. This is for 4 to 20 players, ages 9 and up, and it'll take you about 30 minutes to play. This is on Kickstarter right now, and it could use your help. And in Missing Link, this is a party game where you're going to be taking two seemingly random objects, revealing one, and then trying to get other people to guess what card is hidden in your hand by providing the... Missing link between the cards. Sound intriguing? Let's open it up and see how it works. All right, so we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Missing Link. Now, as I always like to mention, this is the promotional copy I have the game in front of me. Obviously, yours aren't going to be sleeved Magic the Gathering cards. So take what you see with a grain of salt. Now, the first thing we're going to go over is our handy-dandy rule sheet, which, as you can see, is not here. That's because my son walked off with it, and I have absolutely no idea where he took it. But it is one page. It was single-sided, I do believe. It was a very, very simple rule book. You'll need it once or twice, then probably never need it again. It was very, very simple for a very, very simple party game. Now, one thing I did have a small critique with it was the team game needed to be stretched out just a little bit more because it was a little bit complicated to figure out what was going on just the way it was worded that might be fixed in the final version though uh, but once you know what you're doing it's a very very simple game both the team game and the free-for-all mode so we're going to go over what you're going to be doing in this game and then we're going to go over how the game is played and the cards and all the various different things so first and foremost in this game and we're going to go over the free-for-all mode because it is my preferred mode of play is that you are going to be grabbing two objects and you are going to be trying to you're going to reveal one of the objects, and then you're going to be trying to get other people to guess what the hidden object is by giving clues uh, based on the missing link between these two objects. Now, every clue that you have to get has to be 100% factual. And what you're going to do is you have two minutes to do that. If you can successfully do that in two minutes, then you'll get to keep a card, and your uh, your opponent will get to keep a card, and then you'll both gain one point. The first person to get to seven points will be the winner of the game. Clear as mud? I know. Let's go over the cards real quick. So, in this game, you're just going to get a bunch of cards. Now, let's take a look at the card, and I'll show you exactly what's going on here. So, this is a pencil, and this is what you're going to be using for the free-for-all mode. The free-for-all mode is this symbol down here. Down here, there's also going to be an adjective, cylindric. Wow, that's a, tr that's a difficult one. That essentially just means it's a cylinder. And down here we have the team version mode. Now the team version mode, everybody's going to be writing down different objects, they're going to be picking the objects, and essentially, uh, it's definitely a different spin on the game, but I like the free-for-all mode better. Uh, so in the free-for-all mode, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be drawing two cards. Now as I mentioned, you're going to be looking at those, and then you're going to be revealing one to everyone. So you might reveal the spoon to everyone. Then you're going to hold the pencil in your hand, you're going to start your two-minute timer, and now what you're going to be doing is giving clues based on the spoon and the pencil that are completely factual to get people to guess that you, in fact, have a pencil in your hand. So you might say, uh, these are both things that you would use in your hand. Uh, these are both things a college student might take with them uh, to a long day at school. Uh, these are both things that you might find in a house. These are both smaller than a, you know, uh, something that's not so small. <laughs> these are both smaller than a stick. As you can see, it's really way more difficult than you would imagine. And a lot of these make it just incredibly difficult to do, so it is a difficult game. But essentially, if someone is able to successfully guess that you have a pencil in your hand, then you would get a point, they would get a point, and then the next player would draw two cards, rinse, wash, and repeat until someone has seven points. Now, in the team game, as I mentioned, we'll just go briefly to that. You're going to be having, uh, you're going to draw three cards, and you're going to pick one based on your team. Then you're going to look at the various different adjectives down there. So you might say, oh, airborne. We'll do airborne. Then everyone else is going to create an object uh, based on the airborne adjective. Then one person who's going to be the designated player is going to pick one and then try to explain uh, what the object is without obviously saying the object. And if you can get it, you'll successfully get a point. And that, in a nutshell, is how Missing Link is played. 
Alrighty then, missing link from Duncan Davis, currently on a Kickstarter near you, down below. Check out the link, it looks like it might be your cup of tea. What are my pros, what are my cons? First, on the con side, the game is not going to be for everybody, because it is a party game. This is definitely a party game, uh, and it's definitely on the lighter side of the party game. If you're looking for more raunchy, yeah, you're going to want to look for elsewhere. Also, I don't, I don't necessarily think this is one that's going to go over well as a game night game. Uh, another con some people are going to have is that the artwork is going to be a complete turnoff. It looks like it's clip art. It looks, uh, some people are going to think it looks unprofessional. And some people I did play said that it looked unprofessional. Me personally, I don't really care about artwork, so it didn't bug me at all. Uh, the last con I have with the game is that the team mode is not as good as the free-for-all. Everyone pretty much agreed that they liked the free-for-all better and they didn't know why we would play the team mode. Uh, the team mode, it's okay, but the free-for-all is just a lot better. Also, in the rule book, I wish there was just a little bit more on how you play the team mode because when you first read it, it's worded a little bit weirdly. You're like, wait, what? But once, once you just do it, it, it's a really simple game mode and you'll figure it out and have be up and running in no time. So, moving on to the pros though, I dug Missing Link. I liked it a lot. Uh, who's going to be digging this game? I definitely think if you are looking for a game that you can bust out with your family at a family get-together, this one absolutely fits the bill. If you got a casual work party, this one is going to be a lot of fun. And the great thing about this game is you don't have to be too into the game. This is not one where everyone has to be at a table or anything like that. You can just have the card sitting out in the middle. Someone could randomly draw two, reveal one, and then just start giving out the clues. Everyone could just be drinking, having fun, carrying on conversations if they're not really too involved in the game. And, and it's great. It, it really does accommodate a large group. It's a super simple game. You can literally have it up and running in under a minute, which is always something that I really, really enjoy. Overall, I really liked Missing Link. It is a very fun, quick, niche party game that has its perfect spot in that niche where, you know, say anything is a great party game, but at the same time, you got to have the boards, you got to have the cards, everybody's got to be actively involved and say, come on, we need your answer, Mark. But, but with this, it's just sit around a table or sit around a living room, have fun, draw cards, and it's super simple, super enjoyable. Currently on Kickstarter right now, it's got a nice appealing price point. I believe it's under $20, and it looks like it might be a cup of tea. Be sure to click on the Kickstarter link below and tell them Bowers Game Corner sent you. Also, in the comments below, let me know what is your favorite casual party game that is super simple. Just bust it out, teach it in a minute, and have fun for hours because I'm always looking for more games like that. Also, if you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on the subscribe button down below. Thanks for your time, YouTube. That was the review for Missing Link. For more reviews and previews, check back at Bowers Game Corner. Yeah.